to start off with uh, our very own American coach, uh, Heather Mooney. Uh, I obviously can speak a lot about Heather's accomplishments as a player, uh, but most recently, uh, what we should all be uh, grateful for and congratulate her on is uh, this gold medal in 2012 in London. So. In the centers, it's crucial that you have leg strength because you're going to be holding up a defender and trying to hold position. The other area that's really important is your vision, knowing where the ball is the whole entire time and being able to read and adapt to where the ball is if you have to change your positioning. And then patience. Patience is vitally important as a center because there's times you want the ball and there's no way it's going to get in there and you lose position and then you have to be patient enough to just counteract and wait for your opportunity and then attack. Um, the ability to play in the now. Um, it was talked about a little bit this morning in the Positive Coaching Alliance, but to like his comment was flush, flush it. You had a bad possession, you got an offensive call, whatever the situation is, but just being able to play in that moment because as a center, you're not going to get all the calls that you were looking for or hoping for, and there's a turnover, and you have to immediately start chasing and playing defense. You can't take a moment, pout, and then start to go back on defense. So playing in the now. Um, a controlled intensity, knowing when it's the time to be aggressive and then when it's the time to being mellow and waiting for that opportunity. So that goes back to your patience. And then back again to mental toughness. Because you never really know how the game is gonna be called with the referees. The games could be t called really tight. A team could be playing zone the whole entire time. So you could play a whole entire, entire game and not touch the ball. Um, so those are some qualities that make the a good center. Responsibilities of the center is to gain the ball side position. And then the other is like maintaining that ball side position. So you're relying on your perimeter players to get to the ball to the side of the pool that you want to hold. And once that happens, it's now your responsibility to maintain that. And then when the ball is coming in, is an explosive move towards that ball so you can cause the referee, get the referee's attention to make a call, give you an exclusion, get the separation that you need to get the shot off, or just get an ordinary foul. Positioning on the centers. Establish and maintain the ball side position by keeping contact with the defender. This is important at the center position. Later when we're talking about the defensive position, I'm going to counteract with this comment. But as a center, you want the defender's chest. Because then you can feel their movement and you can make sure that you're able to counteract what they're about to do. When they have the separation and they only have their hands on your back, it's a lot harder to feel where they're going to be moving or jumping to, so it's a little bit harder to read. So if you're able to establish and maintain that ball side position and keep the contact with the defender, you're going to be a lot more successful. Centers must know their position in front of the cage. A lot of times there's players that are taking shots outside the post because we don't know where we are in the, in the cage. So in relationship to the cage, that location in the pool is really, really important. The ideal location is at the three meter line center cage. Doesn't happen all the time, but it's ideal. <music> base position. On the base position, the way that we teach it in the, the situation is it's basically like you're sitting in a chair. And you have your back slightly hunched, your chin is to your chest, shoulders are out of the water, slightly exposed, elbows are high, and your hands are sculling. And the reason that we do this is your body position is like you're just able to hold that positioning and you have an, a higher percentage of snapping and getting the separation and being over your legs. So when you're in that chair, your knees are high and you think about and the, the points that I always like to teaching points to kids is taking your hip bones and your rib cage and squishing it together. And you're making that curve in your back, the ideal curve, because that forces your shoulders to roll forward. You bring that hips and you want to maintain your hips over your leg, like you don't want them in front or behind. So thinking about like taking those hip bones and the rib cage and just squishing them together as like just a good teaching point so they can think about like just small little things. The chin to the chest, it eliminates an offensive foul. You're not throwing your head back, you're gonna have your chin to your chest and especially when you're snapping and getting that separation, it's everything's going forward towards that ball. 
Shoulders out of the water, just getting the referee's attention, exposing what they're, what's happening to them from the defender standpoint. I like the elbows raised and they're parallel with your shoulders because it makes you wider. You're not narrow because then that defender can get around you a little bit more. You're nice and wide and big and you're covering your responsibility. And then you're also able to dip and move a little bit to cover more water if the defender's moving more. Reestablishing that base position. So in the center position, our, our hips are down, we're vertical. Defensively, you're gonna be horizontal. You're gonna lose that battle. That defender is gonna be able to push you out of your position, your ideal position in front of that cage. To reestablish that, so or if you're losing your contact with that defender, the way, it's a quarter turn. And so if the, if the defender's behind me and they have my full back to push on, so I have my, the, so I'm in my base position, I'm square to the ball, I'm waiting for the ball to come in, I'm getting pushed out. So instead of turning and swimming, it's that quarter turn. And the comment that like it's, I'm wide and then I'm narrow. I'm, it's harder just to, now they only have a shoulder to push on. And then with that, after that quarter turn, it's an explosive breaststroke kick getting into that dinner, the defenders underneath the armpit, bringing back and getting into that base position. And so I'm getting pushed out and out of position. I can easily slip, getting narrow, and then I can breaststroke kick diving back underneath, snap my shoulders square, and I'm back into my base position, regaining water that I lost. Face to face positioning. So, most of the teams that we play against, they start in a press. And to kind of conserve energy with the center position, we start in a face-to-face -face position. So they are in front. The defender takes position, they're in a front position, we're gonna go into a face-to-face. -face. That's facing your defender, arm to arm, maintaining space between you. You don't wanna be really tight because then you lose your momentum of driving back into that defender and making the defender back away and reposition. So you wanna maintain a good distance between, but your arm and arm, bicep, tricep area is the ideal place that you're grabbing. Then the reasons is you're gonna grab, you're gonna turn, spin, and seal, but you're gonna be there in this position for the sight line to the ball. You're gonna conserve your energy, and especially for the women, it protects our suit, because that zipper is so nice, just to be able to control everyone. The, movements need, the movement needs to be powerful and explosive. You're actually going into that defender, trying to gain a little inch of water, making them have to backpedal and reposition. If it's just a casual, then they're able to reposition or even jump in front and maintain that front position. The turn, it centers inside arm to the cage. So the arm, so if the cage is behind me, it's this arm that's closest, the ball's over on this side of the pool, it's that inside arm to the outside armpit of the defender. I'm gonna pull that defender and put my shoulder on that defender's armpit. This spin is just the, I always, for like younger kids, I like to say you're putting up a roadblock. You're putting your body in position as a roadblock to block that defender from repositioning and getting in front. So like if I'm here and we're face to face, 
The ball gets to the side of the pool that I'm getting to like the, I, now it's my turn to go to work. I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna go my turn, spin, and seal. So at this point, my spin, I've just put up the roadblock. So now that defender is trapped behind me, so I'm protecting, that's the ball, me, and now the defender. So that positioning is mine. I own this water in front of me. The seal <clears throat> is where you're sealing off, you're getting your back, in, your back into that center position, you're establishing your base position, you're maintaining ball side, And then the other area is like the defender, you're gonna move. They're gonna reposition. So if they start to reposition, an ideal point and a controlling area is from the armpit to the hip of the defender. So if I have my hands out wide and the defender's moving to my left, I can actually just hook a little bit underneath that armpit and I can help pull my body and bring my chair with me. So I don't lose my base position. So if the ball does come in, I can react to that ball. So controlling that defender from the armpit to the hip with small little movements just to maintain that body position. So just gaining the, the ball side. So if the defender starts ball side, the center would start in a face-to-face. -face. So we're going through this. So they're fronting. The defender's taught to be fronting. So you're maintaining your sight line. You're gonna turn, spin, and seal when the ball gets to the side that you're holding. The window of work that we wanna work is only three to five seconds. So you can be as explosive as possible. That's ideal, it doesn't always happen. You could be in that center base position for a while, especially if they fall into a zone, and then you have to work on spreading that zone. <clears throat> you have to also anticipate the center entry pass. And that like deals with like your relationship with your perimeter players, knowing them, knowing what, what they have or how it happens. Brenda and I had a good relationship and she was a great center entry pass. It was something that like you saw it and you knew it was coming. So then that was that anticipation. So then you were able to snap to the ball and get great separation. she's ready and waiting, get to the two meter line. Get her a little bit deep, she'll take the front position, and then once you get to this position, you can move her out at a 45 degree angle. And that, but you wanna go at a 45 degree angle because you don't wanna go her strength against your strength, because then you're not really gonna go anywhere. Legs against leg. If you move her out at a 45 degree angle, <coughs> sorry, one, she might not realize how far she's going. So then the ball comes over, there's a skip pass, it gets down deep, or it's over on this side, I can go inside arm, outside arm, hit, turn, spin, and seal. Now I have a 45 degree angle to the water, the ball can land here, I have inside water. And it's a simple, and it's a 45 degree angle. If you have, because a, a lot of people, oh, she's waiting for me, she's in her front, still a counterattack. If the ball is in the position to hit the center, at that time, so I'm coming down the pool, the ball is already deep, I can stop early and go to work here. So you're gonna have a quicker transition. If the ball is still with the goalie, get down to two, set it up, 45 degree angle, move her out, and then go from there. And it gives you just a different, it's an easier pass from like the one, the, the one two, four, five sides. Because even if I'm in this position and John has the ball, he can place it in here and I have water to work.
So on here, it's the move the 45 degree angle. So on this one, this is a, like the verbiage of like spinning back towards the cage. So if the defender has moved too far away from the goal or it begins to move to the inside. So like you're taking, you're out at five meters as a defender, you're taught to come back to the inside and start pushing out. So to counteract that, you can spin back towards the cage to seal them off and still maintain your ball side position. If you're not able to spin, like if the defender is like swimming or has a quicker stroke and they cover a lot more water than what your spin does, you can actually match their stroke. And then once you're swimming in, take the hand closest to the ball. So if the ball is over here with John and I'm swimming back to, I take the hand closest to where that ball is and I'm going to spin back in because I'm always putting up the roadblock. If you always think about putting your body as the blocking, that roadblock, then they're going to be able to maintain that ball side position. Uh, we demonstrated the short side technique, but it's just when that defender over anticipates everything. Um, drawing a foul. One of the things, especially even at the junior level, is like just maintaining your base position. It's really hard. One of the things that it's like a lot of defenders, what they'll do is they'll start pushing on your hips to get your hips out of position because your hips are supposed to be underneath. If that's happening, just do like a quick little breaststroke kick and it's going to help drive your hips back. You don't want to do a constant breaststroke kick because then that establishes a rhythm and it makes it really easy for a defender to jump around. So the idea is like with those quick explosive breaststroke kicks, it's to drive your hips back into that base position and then you can maintain your positioning. Um, absorb the contact. A lot of times you, it's, they'll go underwater, so then it's a no call from the referee, and you got to keep your head up. Because if your head's up, most likely you're going to know where the ball is. And then the biggest thing in an area that we're struggling on, just with the national teams, is snapping to the ball. And the snap to the ball is crucial. And what that thing, what it is, is it creates, it, it, it creates so much. It causes the referees to look because you're actually making that move to the ball, exposing what the defender's doing. But then it also opens up a shooting lane. And on that snap, it's basically, you're in your base position, you're gonna drive your left shoulder into that defender's chest, making your arms this much longer, your shoulder length longer, but you've really gotta step with your right leg or if you're left-handed, your left leg and scoop water and cover and be on your blades. A lot of times when we're snapping or we're trying to move to the ball, we don't take our chair, so we don't have our base, and there's nothing behind it. So if the defender overcommits one way or the other, I don't have my leg base to finish my shot. Some shooting factors. A big one, where the defender is. It's going to dictate what your shot is. Um, if they're behind you, if they're in the front position, on the side, it really depends on what they are and how it's really going to dictate what positioning and what your shots are. <clears throat> um, where am I in relationship to the goal? So we talked about how important the goal is. Am I on left? Am I in the center? Am I at four meters, five meters? If you t try to take a quarter turn out at five meters, it's a hard shot to finish. And, or if you're at two meters, it's gonna be a high percentage. And then the other one is what type of center entry pass. Because you know that they're gonna sometimes be a beeline to your face, um, sometimes they're gonna be really good, and sometimes they're gonna be super short, or you might have to catch it out of the air and try to control it. So that's where it's like watching the ball and seeing if you can anticipate and react to that ball so you can control it so it's not necessarily always a turnover with a bad pass. starts out of your base. So if you're in your base position, you're going to be able to react to whatever's coming. And the biggest thing is, is it's like, once you're in your base position, you turn, spin, and seal, and they fall back into a zone, you can read that zone. So now your job in the center position is to spread that zone. So you've gotten the honor, you, you've honored, the defense honors you as a center, so they're going to fall back and not let the ball come into you. So now to help out your teammates, I've got to try to move across the cage. And one of the things is, is like making sure that like it's not always back to the two meter line because if you're deep, you just you need to move across the cage to draw those defenders to see how far they're actually going to go. If they don't follow, then that pass can come in. If someone's crashing, you can visually see that because you're on your base, you're on your legs, 
and you can see that and you can know you're gonna have to snap, move the ball away in a nice outlet pass. So if you have a defender that's grabbing your zipper, the zipper component. One of the easiest ways, so it's like the set it's separated. If you can just, one of the simple ones is what we talked about is the quarter turn, so you're exposing the zipper zap, grab, and then you can dive back in to try to get into position. If she still has hold, so she, and it doesn't work, you can spin, go back to face to face for a second, or just continue to spin and try to get back into your base. So it's a constant spin and breaking the hold. The other one is there's the low, the low hip grab that pulls your hips so there's something lower here. It's the same, if you spin away and knock the forearm a little bit, like in this situation, you can break the hole, get separation, and then go back into your base position. So there's always a way of like spinning. It's a lot of things that like, I have like a lot of people, like if you're grabbing up here, they try to jump up and expose like, to the referee, and you lose your momentum, and it gives that possibility for the defender, that means the defender wins. Because the referee might give it to him one time a game, and if you're constantly doing it, then it's, you're not necessarily working with your perimeter players to try to just overcome that adversity and hold your position. So it's more of like a quick spin. Um, if, it's, if it's really, really like in the face-to-face -face position and they've got this position, just a quick barrel roll, like where you're spinning always towards the outside elbow, because then they can't hold. And if they do, it can hurt. Because it's like if they do hold it and you're knocking that and they're still holding, it's really going to be a possibility of hyperextending the elbow on the fact that you're not sitting there like this, holding it, making it happen. If they choose to not let go, then it's going to hurt them. Not on purpose, but. So, Ellen and I are both over six foot, and when you're playing the Italians, they're like, by four. So you have to play a little bit lower in the water, like maintaining, like, so when you're in your base position, you're not up really, really high, you're a little bit lower, so then you don't look like the aggressor. Like, you always want to kind of look like the victim in the whole thing, even though you're kind of controlling the situation.